Are you looking to add a drop down menu like this to your bot? Well then, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. I'm going to be showing you everything to do with drop downs with Discord bots. Hi friends, it's James and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So as you just saw, today we're going to be looking at drop downs. And this video follows very closely on to my last video I made, all to do with buttons. And it uses very, very similar techniques. It's kind of the same, but then at the same time, it's slightly different. So if you haven't seen that buttons video, I recommend you go and watch that first. It's really interesting to see what those do, as well as it just gives you some useful information that will be useful in this video. I'll leave a card in the top right and a link in the description. So yes, today we're doing drop downs and everything to do with how they work, how you use them and all the code behind it. So you know what, without further ado, let's get started. So then. The first thing is we need to create a class. And as I just said, this is very similar to buttons. Buttons worked by creating a class like we did here. So we're gonna do the same, but for dropdowns, because dropdowns do also require a class. So let's do it, let's create a class. Let's create this, let's do this class. And then let's give it a name. Let's just gonna call it, for the purpose of this um, video, I'm just gonna give it the name dropdown. Now open and close brackets. And inside of this, we want to pass in next chord dot ui dot select so very similar to what we did up here with buttons but instead of view we are doing select and you'll see why a bit later then we want to do a colon then we want to initialize our class so we do def underscore underscore init underscore underscore open and close brackets self and then colon like that now then inside of this init here we need to define the options of a drop down well, so what our drop down will say, the different options that a user can select. And to do this, what we do is we have to create an array, an array of all of our options. So let's do this. Let's do select options is equal to our array. And inside of this array, we can put our options. So let's do next chord dot select dot uh, option like that. No dot, sorry. Then label is equal to and this is the name that you want to give it the name of so what that drop down will say so for the purpose of this i am going to say subscribe and then you also want to give it a description so what that drop down will do so let's say to do this we do description is equal to and then give it a description of what that drop down will do so subscribe to the channel there we go now you want to go ahead and create as many drop downs, many options here as you want. And the more um, options you create here, the more drop down options you'll have in Discord. When we go, to, when we run that command later, I hope you can see what I'm saying here. So go ahead now and create as many of these options that you want. I'll go ahead and do that now. And look, as you can see here, I've gone through and created two more options: subscribe, do subscribe, and must subscribe because you must subscribe. Please do subscribe. And the next bit. So we need to do super like we did before. Then dot, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore open and close brackets. Now we need to define the placeholder. And the placeholder is what's going to be inside of the drop down box before we click on it. If you see what I'm saying here, I'll insert an image on the screen now, which will hopefully make it a bit more clear. So that is what your placeholder is. So in my case here, I'm going to say here, subscribe options like that. Then after this placeholder, we need to define the min value. So how many values that a user must pick from the drop down and then the max values. Again, how many values the user will pick. So in both case, I'm going to say one. And the last bit is we need to pass in these options that we just created here. And so to do this, we do options is equal to and then the name of this array so select options there we go and we just paste it in like that great so we've now just set up our initiation to drop downs so now inside of this class i'm going to also show you something else that we can do we're going to write the code to detect what option the user has selected because and then give an appropriate response based on that option so let's say they chose the subscribe option you could give appropriate response so maybe you could reply with thank you 
or if maybe they selected a do subscribe option, they replied, thank you very much. You see what I'm saying here? So we can detect which one the user has um, selected and then give an appropriate response based on what you want it to do. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to create that function now. So we're going to do async def, and then we're going to get a function name callback. But I have spelled async wrong here. Apologies. Now, we want to open and close brackets, and we want to pass in self because we're inside of a class. And interaction colon interaction, just like we've done in previous episodes. That shouldn't be new. Now we're going to write the code to detect which option the user has selected. So to do this, we're going to do if and self dot values square brackets zero is equal equal and then the name of the first option. So in my case, subscribe the name of your first label. I'll explain what this does in a second. Subscribe and then colon. Okay, let me explain. So what this is saying here is it's going to check the values that um, the user has selected. So when a user selects an option, it's going to be stored in these values. And it's going to the, uh, the first thing in the array, zero. That's by basic, basic Python syntax. Hopefully you know why we've used zero here. Because zero will get the first term of the array, values. And values will contain the option that the user has selected. And then we're saying if the first term of the values is equal to the label subscribe, then we want to give it an appropriate response. So we're going to write that response now. So return await interaction dot response. Oops, response dot send underscore message, open and close brackets, and then we can do a response. So let's say thank you for subscribing. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and create these if statements for every other one of these um, label options, these select options that you have created. So for example, elif self dot values square bracket zero is equal equal to do subscribe here. So this label here, and then you can do whatever you want here. So maybe you want to return with another message. I just want to point out, you don't have to send a message here. You could do something else. For example, maybe you want to add something to a database, for example, or I don't know, respond with an emoji. You can see what I'm saying. In fact, we're going to apply with another message saying, thank you for double subscribing. You, you know what I mean, because you should be subscribed. Then we could do it again for our last option. But we can, to do a last option, we can literally just do else and then return await. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for triple subscribing. We'll put. There we go. So now let's go over what we've done. We've created our three options that the user could select from their drop down. And then we've created the code to detect which option a user has selected. It will give an appropriate response based on what the user has selected. I really hope that makes sense. Great. So we're actually approaching the end. We're nearly, nearly done. So we finished with that class that we created drop down. But now we actually need to create another class. And this new class, think of it like it's going to render this drop down. It's going to be able to display the drop down in Discord. It will make more sense when we write the code. So let's do it. So we're going to do class and then drop. We're going to give it the name drop down view. I'm going to go open and close brackets and we're going to pass in next chord dot UI dot view. Great. Then we're now going to initialize it. We're going to do def underscore underscore init underscore underscore open and close bracket. I'm going to pass in self. Now inside of this, all we're going to do is we're going to do super open and close bracket dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore open and close bracket. Then we're going to do self dot add underscore item open and close brackets drop down open and close brackets. Now let me quickly explain what this is doing. Is this class here? This is what we're going to call when we run our command. What this command base, what this class basically does is it takes this drop down class that we create here and basically puts it into a UI view, if that makes sense. Basically, it's just allowing the drop down to be displayed in Discord. That's all it's doing. And I hope that makes sense. So great, we have finished both of our classes. Now we don't need to create any more classes. All we need to do now is just to create a command, a command that when we run it will display the drop down. So great, let's do it. We're going to create a slash command. So at next chord dot slash underscore command. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to give it the name. Let's call it just, let's just going to call it drop down just for the purpose of this tutorial. So drop down. Remember, this has to be a lowercase d. It can't have any capitals. Then I'm just going to give it a description of, let's call, let's say, uh, drop 
down test. And then, of course, we're going to pass in the guild ID because we want it to work quickly. Don't want to wait for it to render. All right, if you don't understand how these slash commands are working, I've created a video in the past that explains all of it. So go ahead and check that out. It will explain everything. And we're going to create a function. And just like we always do, I'm going to pass it interaction, colon, interaction. And all we're going to do is we're going to define view is equal to drop down view. Okay, let me explain what we've done. So we created a slash command with the name of the drop down and description of drop down test. Then we've created a function and given it the name drop. The name of the function does not matter. We've passed in self and interaction. Interaction basically just allows us to interact, like so send messages and stuff. I've explained that in past episodes. Then we're creating the function view and we're defining it to this class that we created here, drop down view. And then all we're going to do is we're going to send a message, which is our drop down. So we can do this by doing a wait interaction dot response dot send underscore message in this we're going to say do you want to subscribe and then we're going to do that and then we're going to pass in this view that we just created great we've now finished and now let me just explain this last line that we created so we're sending a message with the contents of do you want to subscribe and then on, on the end of it, we're passing in this view function. And this view function relates to this variable that we just created here. So basically what we're passing in is this drop down view class. And this class up here that we created, the drop down view class, references this drop down we created. Basically, just think of it as like links. So basically what this is doing here is we just basically, the final result is we're passing in the drop down. That is basically what this is doing. I really hope that makes sense. So let's run it and test it and hopefully it will all work. I wouldn't be surprised if we get some mistakes, errors. And of course we have got an error. And that mistake that, it, that, we cr that I did, which is a very stupid mistake, is I forgot to put the com commas after each of these in this array. Hopefully, when we run it now, there will be no more errors and it will all work. However, I would not be surprised again if there are more errors. Apologies if there are. And I've made another mistake, which is I forgot a colon after this function. I do apologise again. Hopefully, third time to chart. Lucky. Let's hopefully it will work. Lovely. It's online. So let's head to Discord. And fingers crossed, all will work. Okay then, so I'm inside of my development server where we've got the bot. And let's run the function. So slash, and look, drop down has appeared. And hopefully when we run this, it will appear with our drop down. Running, there you go, it has popped up. So then, let's go ahead and click on this drop down. And hopefully, look at that, we have got our three different options. Subscribe, do subscribe, and must subscribe. Let's go ahead and click on subscribe, and hopefully it will reply with our thank you for subscribing message. Look at that, it does, it works. And if we select the other options, hopefully it will apply with their messages too. But as you can see here, this interaction failed. And that is because we've set it up so our bot, you can only reply once to the drop down. This is why it's failed. Look at that, we've done it. We have successfully got our bot to send drop down messages and have got it so it replies with a specific message when the user selects a specific drop down. Well, I hope this video has been useful to you. I hope you found it interesting that you've learned something new. If you have, please do consider subscribing. And while you're down there, you might as well give this video a like. But anyway, I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya!